Emotion is not your enemy. Emotions are more like your gym clothes. What would happen if every day when you came home from working out, you took off your stinky, smelly, sweaty gym clothes and just shoved them in the back of your closet? You don't see them anymore, so problem solved, right? And you keep doing this day after day until eventually a smell begins to permeate everything. Your closet is full, and that pile of clothes is threatening to burst out at the worst possible moment. Just like our clothes in the closet, shoving down and stuffing away our emotions doesn't solve anything. The emotions that we suppress need to be expressed. This is what we do in drama therapy. Drama therapy is a branch of the creative arts therapy, such as dance movement therapy, art therapy, and music therapy. It is an active and experiential healing process. As a registered drama therapist, I'm trained in psychotherapy, and I use techniques like you might find in a drama class, such as creative play, improvisation, and acting to treat mental health issues. Now, in typical psychotherapy, we rely on words to get us through. But have you ever had the experience where words just weren't enough? That's because we're more than just talking heads. The emotions that we have live inside our body as much as our brains. And so in order to fully express them, we need to embody them, not only talk about them. I work in inpatient psychiatric treatment, where I facilitate drama therapy groups and sessions. Now, as I'm doing these sessions, I'm working with clients that are dealing with things like extreme depression, anxiety, self-harm, attachment issues, and complex PTSD. And I always begin our work in the same place, exploring playfulness. <laughs> This is because, as artist Britt Cheetah illustrated, play is the opposite of survival mode. Now let's play with that idea. I want you to imagine that I have a magical ball of energy, and I want you to catch it. Beautiful. Now notice what happened for you in that moment. First of all, you might have had to ask yourself, am I willing to step outside my comfort zone, maybe look a little silly? And then you had to become present enough to catch the ball. Now, oftentimes, someone struggling with mental health has a difficult time being present, because anxiety wants you to live in the future, and shame pulls you back to the past. But when you play, you're in the here and now. So not only have you dropped your defenses and become present, but through play, you're connecting with someone in a real, non-threatening way. Thanks for holding that energy ball. You want to toss it back now? Oh. Okay. Good. So while my approach may seem light-hearted, it is not light-minded. Because as we continue, we begin to play with more difficult concepts. So I might ask someone, Show me what it's like to have a temper tantrum. Now, for someone who's been taught their whole life that showing emotion is a sign of weakness, this can be terrifying. But when we're given permission to feel and feel big, it can be exhilarating. Or let's say I'm working with a client who grew up in an abusive home. I might ask them, what does anger feel like in your body? Can you strike an angry pose or say something with an angry voice? Keep in mind, my client has only ever seen anger expressed as physical violence. But if we can safely embody and act out anger without it resulting in aggression, we're rehearsing new emotional responses and changing generational patterns. Or if I'm working with a client who's terribly depressed, I might say something like, Let's imagine that you're meeting your favorite superstar, and it is the best day of your entire life. And they look at me, and they're like, that's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, but it's just acting. Try it out. What have you got to lose? See, now we've created an emotional laboratory, a safe place to experiment and try on different roles and emotions without committing to consequences. And as clients try on different emotional outfits, they might find that one outfit is exactly what they've been looking for. 
They might say something like, whoa, it felt really good to be angry. And it reminded me of the time that my dad left us when we were kids, and I was so mad, but I had to put on a brave face for my younger siblings. Or if I ask someone to play the role of goddess of the universe, she might say, wow, that was really weird, but I wonder what it might be like to carry some of that confidence into my everyday life. Now, you might be thinking, acting, how is that really addressing anything? Isn't that just playing pretend? To which philosopher Jacques Derrida would say, to pretend I actually do the thing. I have therefore only pretended to pretend. Our imaginations are so powerful. We can imagine something, and it creates a real feeling. So that when my client, deep in grief, wants to speak to her mother who died from a drug overdose, we can create that. Now, my client understands she's not actually speaking with her dead mother, but by imagining what it would be like, creating a real feeling, and then saying the things she's been holding on to, this is how we clean out our emotional closets. Or, if as a child, you are constantly criticized or scared and never received the warmth of love that every child deserves, let's go back in time. Find that little you. Give them a hug. Encourage them. And give them that feeling of love. Now, you may not actually be back with your inner child, but that feeling of self-love you just created is a real feeling that you can take with you. Now, this is not self-delusion. This is an essential creative act of allowing ourselves to express and embody the things that we have suppressed. We live in a tumultuous world where few escape traumatic events, such as feeling unsafe, abuse, conflict, loss, or even a global pandemic. There's no cure for dealing with trauma, no magic wand, but there are some steps we can take. Now, a victim is someone who has something happen to them. An actor is an agent who makes action happen. The trademark of trauma is feeling helpless or unable to act. The very meaning of the word drama is to act. Trauma renders us powerless, but drama gives us power to move, act, feel, and express with the very body that has been traumatized. If we are to move forward with our emotional and mental well-being, whether that's dealing with traumatic events or just the emotional residue of everyday living, we need to become actors in our own lives and clean out those emotional closets. William Shakespeare famously wrote, all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. Don't just sit in the audience of your life. It might be time to get dramatic. Thank you. Woo!